Wow! Thank you. What's up? Hello. Ça va bien? Guys! Guys! Welcome back to Montreal. Thank you. Let us see. Good to be here. <laughs> All right. It's a minor miracle to have you here, no less. After um, getting through the fans here, I heard you met some fans this morning for breakfast. And um, after waiting for you all summer, these uh, kids here are extremely happy to have you here, as are we. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. We're glad It's to, good be to be back. back. Thank you. We witnessed, um, at the end of August, we witnessed your triumph, your return back to the stage. And I want to congratulate you all. Um, especially AJ. Thank you. Thank you all for the support. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to know that first day that you guys stepped back on stage together, what was the first thing that ran through each of your minds? For me, if I could remember any of the choreography since I've been away for so long, I'd, I was actually practicing some of the moves when I was in treatment. It was actually quite interesting, but uh, <laughs> I was trying to remember everything. And okay, it's all coming back to me. But uh, it, it was awesome to get back on stage with the fellas, and for all of us to be a uh, one big happy family again. To see all of our production staff, dancers, everybody, it was like coming back home. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. What about you guys? What were your thoughts when you stepped back on stage after a month hiatus? Hiatus. Well, we took the time off. Um, we were, you know, I think through our, throughout all of our minds, we weren't really sure exactly what was going to happen with the fans. If they were really going to, you know, hopefully be there to support us. I mean, we were very honest and open about what happened yeah. with the whole situation. So it was good to see, getting back up on the stage there, the first show in Milwaukee, just the reaction of everybody seeing us back up on the stage was just like, wow, it was like a, like a reunion yeah. for just, just from being away from a month. Definitely. It was a, hard, it was a hard decision, I'm sure, to say, okay, we are going to be honest. We are going to tell um, the fans what's happening. How did you guys arrive to that decision? How did you actually say, okay, first of all, you had to assess it to themselves and to yourself. Um, and dealing with, uh, or just recognizing alcoholism or depression is sometimes hard. How did you assess it? Did these guys help you or did you have to find it within yourself? I actually, um, make a long story short, I actually have Kevin above and beyond anybody to thank for realizing what was going on in my head. We had a softball game planned on, a, on one of our days off and it was just us five were going to go throw the first pitch out and maybe stay for the game if we wanted to or whatnot. Because I had been partying so much the night before, I didn't want to get up. It was a day off. I figured, I don't, I don't need to get up. It's just a softball game. Kevin, baseball, whatever. <laughs> Kevin, got a, Kevin and I got into an argument. Uh, we exchanged some, you know, words. And after Kevin walked out of my room, I kind of sat there and felt like a big pile of crap and basically realized that I... I couldn't do this on my own anymore, and, and that it was all, it all just kind of hit me, and I thank Kevin for kind of just opening up my eyes, and I told the fellas, and it was the best thing I could ever done. I mean, I would express my feelings towards anybody who's got any, any kind of problems to definitely talk to somebody, because if I didn't have these four guys, I don't know where I would have ended up, so... And if I didn't have the support of all of our fans, I wouldn't know where I would end ended up. So, I thank you as well. Proof is that these, these four guys are still standing and sitting right next to you. And these kids are here and they're going to be at the Everybody's show tonight. Everybody's still here. Um, little um, question for you then. Are you, do you feel that with this event, it's been even stronger that you've picked up as the elder, the, the moral or the, the paternal responsibility in the group? No, I mean, all of us. Mama. <laughs> All of us had been, you know, witness to things that AJ was doing and behavior that wasn't really the AJ that we knew, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to be the one to, you know, 
speak my mind at that time and it and it sunk in and it affected him and he he did what he did so Perfect. A uh, little bit of translation right now. On parle à Kevin uh, qui a eu le rôle uh, un peu de, de catalyste uh, dans, uh, dans, dans toute l'histoire uh, qui implique aider. AJ, AJ dit que sans Kevin, il n'aurait pas pu réaliser qu'il y avait un problème d'alcoolisme, un problème de dépression et qu'il devrait, qu devait vraiment prendre un petit break uh, au sein du groupe. Je leur demandais à quoi ils ont pensé lorsqu'ils lorsqu ont mis le pied uh, sur la scène pour la première fois au Milwaukee. Lorsqu'ils étaient de retour à la fin août, ben AJ lui disait « Moi, j'ai tout simplement pratiqué » Mes, mes petits bouts de chorégraphie parce que j'avais un peu peur d'avoir tout oublié. J'avais même pratiqué ça euh, lorsque j'étais euh, lorsque j'étais dans ma cure de désintoxication. Et puis c'était tous un peu fébrile euh, lorsqu'ils sont retournés sur la scène la première fois. I wanted to know because we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to five years ago when you were first here. When you guys, it wasn't the first time for the Backstreet Boys, but it was a little bit of the um, the craziness. We had 65,000 fans um, in Quebec. And I wanted to know, over the years, um, to sometimes overcome difficulties like this, is it necessary to build kind of a, a personal shield? A personal shield. Some people uh, find it uh, in, in different ways, but do you guys find it it's necessary to, to have some kind of shield and to let some things be kept private? Certain certain aspects of your life are, are gonna ha should be kept personal. Mm -hmm. Not everybody in the world should know your every move, but I mean you have to be willing to let your guard down. But each of us, once we go back home after we're on on tour or shooting a video or doing whatever, or we're in the in the studio, we go back home and we have our our normal everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And you know we don't want people following us around with cameras everywhere no. we go and stuff like that. I mean. We're normal people like everybody else. We just want to have our, our me time for yeah, each of us. Exactly. And it's important to find that me in, instead of just finding a backstreet boy, exactly. I guess. You know, finding... And with each of us, you know, we each have our parameters and some are different than others mm -hmm. uh, in, in the group. We, some of us want our private time more than others and, you know, we're each different, so... Very. Definitely. Well, we're very proud of you. And now we're going to go back, actually, just to refresh everybody's memory and see what you guys look like oh, five God. years ago. Almost five years ago. We're going back to uh, September 96, Festival de Montgolfière. On regarde une petite capsule où les Backstreet Boys étaient venus nous rendre visite et 65 000 d'entre vous étaient là pour les accueillir au Festival de Montgolfière. <laughs> 